I'm happy to be here this morning. David said that there is no better place than to be in the house of God. There's no better place than to be in the secret place of the Most High God. Amen, church. There's no better place than to be under the shadow of Almighty God, where you are protected, where you are safe, where you are guided, where you are directed in your life. Amen. And today we're in the presence of Almighty God. We're in the presence of His Spirit. And God is ready to speak to you as He's already spoken to us. If, you, if your heart was open and He has yet to say more things to you. And he's, when He speaks, He speaks life. Amen. When He speaks, He speaks direction and purpose. So let's uh, get our hearts ready to receive the Word of God and to hear what He has to say to us in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, church. Um, I just came back from South Africa, uh, spent there a couple weeks uh, being uh, with Prophet Shepherd Bushiri, being around his ministry and, and just kind of getting imparted and being impacted of what's going on there, what's going on in his life, what's going on in the ministry and what's going on in, in South Africa. And you know the, uh, the things that are happening there are, are crazy, are amazing and it's... Uh, and I believe it's a, it's, a, it's a foreshadow of what, of what God is going to do in our lives and in our ministry. A couple of things that just kind of to underline, there's too many things to discuss. But in the last nine months, his ministry tripled in size. I mean, his ministry was already big, 75 or 80,000 members. But in the last month, his ministry tripled in size. There is just an, 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 an enormous grace to see people saved, see people healed and he see people delivered. And no more grace over his life to, to just for the growth. To that, to that extent in the last nine months, in the last nine months he released and opened about a thousand churches nearby and around that area where he is at Pretoria, Johannesburg and Santon so that he can relieve his main church of the commerce. He is at the point where he's begging people not to come to church. I mean what a problem to have, eh? He's begging people not to come to church so they can go to the surrounding churches that he opened and put the pastors on top. I was at his international conference, uh, international con uh, pastors conference where only pastors of 500 members and more could attend. It was about 450, 450 pastors that was in, in attendance from uh, international worldwide, majority of them from Africa. Some pastors that have two, three hundred churches underneath of them. Um, I was at his leader's uh, not a conference, it was like an evening thing or all day thing. Leaders just from his church and the churches surrounding him. And there was a while, about between 11 to 14,000 leaders that was in attendance. From just his church alone and within, within that little surrounding area. Kind of like a Tri-Cities area but times 10. Uh, so um, anyways... But there is an amazing, an amazing grace and his focus and his, and his ministry right now is shifting from uh, instead of growing a church because he can't grow it anymore. Can you believe it? Uh, there is a parking lot, there's like stretches over two miles long for 10,000 cars. It takes two and a half hours, depending where you parked, to get out from the church after an eight hour service. And so uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is so that we could elevate our vision and to see what is possible with God. What is possible when we continue to persevere, when we continue to pray, to fast, when we continue to give, when we continue to sacrifice for the sake of seeing salvation of people. There comes a point, there comes a time where God opens a door and opens the floodgates of heaven to the point where you are not able to receive because the time is coming church and the time is near when even the largest facilities in tri-cities will not be able to contain us where people will be lining up hours before people will be lining hours before hours and hours before this church service starts so they can find a seat because the glory and the presence of God will be so strong in a place where people will be getting healed people will be getting delivered and people will be, get, be uh, receiving the prophetic word from God and direction from life. People will be lining up. People will be flying out from the, all over the world into this place, small place of tri-cities so that they can experience God and that time is coming. 
the time is coming where we'll be asking our members to please don't come to church watch us online so that the new visitors and those that are out of town can come and participate in the service make sure watch online and send your ties and attend your home groups but church I'm telling you the time is coming and I I feel it in my spirit and I sense especially when I was there that that it, this is where we're going that our focus will not be to to grow the church this will be something that will be happening automatically but our church will shift and go into a season that was prophesied over our church decades ago that this will be a, a international school of ministry international school for pastors international school of worship where we will be focused not just on raising people here but we'll be focused on raising people from all over the world and sending can you just lower the mic just that bit and sending people out there to carry that vision that passion and that zeal and that fire that we're carrying that God has given to us and, and that it will be going all over the world in Jesus mighty name amen church I believe it I believe it and I know I know it's coming I know God is preparing us you know why I know it's coming as I was preparing uh, for this message um, and uh, I was flipping through some of my old messages and I came across a message uh, called uh, God wants you in 2015 and I opened up and I like to open up our messages and our pastor always encourages encourages us to open our messages with a vision before we begin to share the Word of God and uh, here's the vision that we were sharing in 2015 that we will have a thousand people in the church and four Sunday services we will have 300 home groups we will see tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people saved many churches opened large schools and colleges for pastors and worship leaders uh, thousands of businessmen and businesswomen raise up supporting financially the kingdom of God large crusades all over the world unexplainable miracles and changing the culture of our generation that was four years ago today we're not quite at four services on Sunday we're just two but it's it's gonna quick change and I'm like wondering like yeah that was 2015 sounded great now that we have two services I'm not sure if I want to have four <laughs> maybe God give us a bigger facility so we can accommodate everybody you know it's not it's not easy to do this you know you think like all you do here is just talk but it's not it's not it's not easy it takes a lot of energy from you but this was in the this was in the beginning of January or February of 2015 and now we're four years down the road and our vision has our vision hasn't changed but that was 2015 we were talking about it way before 2015 2000 2005 2006 2008 2010 and all the way until now and I want to tell you church is that if we remain true to the vision that God has given us God will remain true to that vision and will to make it come to pass and if you believe it shout amen, amen. if you believe it shout amen. amen 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 and one thing that uh i kind of want to leave uh this and move on to the message um kind of randomly randomly uh, two or three people men of god uh that i've met uh throughout the course of two weeks that i was there and we were just talking talking about life what do you do what i do type of a thing you know guys talk uh, you know what do you do for work uh, i work <laughs> that, that type of a thing it wasn't anything super spiritual and deep but those uh those three ha so happened to be a man of god and they moved in prophetic i didn't know but they begin to speak to me about different things in my life and and specifically about the church they spoke a lot about the church and one thing that they all were speaking is that they seen a great move of healing and prophetic in our church and say it's beginning but it's only the beginning is that what you're about to step into and what you're about to see in your church and your ministry is going to be far beyond what you imagine and see and the second thing that that stood out to me that was very powerful the first time I've heard it they said is that God is raising up a youth movement in your church he said that unlike anything that America has seen and all three of them come on let's put our hands together and all three of them were different random places different times three of them don't know each other and I don't know them and three of them almost said a word for word and they said that God is raising a strong youth movement and youth ministry in your place 
And I believe those prayers that we pray every single Sunday, every time we get together on Wednesdays, every time we get together for prayer, every time we pray for our youth, every time we declare that they're going to be revivalists, they're going to be prophets, they're going to be evangelists and pastors, they're going to be strong men and women of God carrying the gospel in every sphere of our society. I believe that God hears those prayers and He will answer and our youth will be a youth that will carry revival into the world in Jesus name. And that will be your kids, that will be my kids. That will be the generation that God is about to save in our schools. So I want you church to continue to pray for our youth. I want you to continue to believe in our youth and invest in them and you will see God's gonna move mightily through our youth in our church in Jesus mighty name. Do you believe it church? I hope you were encouraged this morning and I hope you embrace this vision and you get in the front lines get into the army of God into the movement of God that what God is doing so that you will be a partaker of that this vision so you will be the doer you'll be the legs and feet and the mouthpiece of God of this movement because God wants you oh, I just repeated my message from 2015 God does want you um, amen 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 I believe God's gonna start a pr powerful prayer movement in a church and the things that we were spoken, another thing from 2015 that I wrote it down here that we were declaring is that we're going to have a prayer mountain with a 24-7 prayer movement. Prayer will never cease. Because anytime prayer goes up, God's answers come down. Amen church? Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Today we're going to continue on the series that we've been in. The secret place. How many of you enjoyed last two messages by Pastor Vlad about the secret place? Amen. I listened to them. The moment it got released, I saw some snippets on uh, sn some snippets on uh, on social media while I was in Africa, uh, South Africa, and I was waiting for it to be uploaded to podcast so I can listen to it because I knew it was powerful. And when I did listen, and God was just moving, people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I believe people got healed and set free last Sunday, and and uh, God is doing amazing things so I want to continue on with that uh, and uh, I want to talk just briefly a little, a little bit about topic dwelling in the secret place if you're writing notes I have a few that will be posted up on uh, on the back you can write it out and we're going to take a reading from Psalm 91 so just take your Bible open your app to Psalm 91 as uh, we're about to read it but I believe that Jesus modeled us a life of prayer and every Christian should pray every Christian should be involved in prayer and every prayer any Christian should live out a life of prayer Bible mentions prayer over 375 times that means at least once per day you should spend in prayer at least once verse a day for you to encourage you to pray see because Satan is the biggest enemy of prayer because Satan Satan can't stop demons can't stop they can't stop the answers from prayer so they they work really hard they work overtime to seduce us in any form in any way for us to not pray because he knows as long as we pray God answers because prayer is like an illegal right that opens the door for God's angels and his spirit to begin to work when we pray amen church so Satan is against prayer and when we pray he can't stand and that's why he was opposing Daniel when Daniel was praying because Daniel discovered that that the time of, of, of slavery and bondage is over but just because it's over that doesn't mean it's gonna come to pass you have to engage actively with God to pray through the promises of God so they got manifest in life so sa Satan is against prayer he was trying to kill Daniel's prayer because Daniel every single day at certain time of the day he would spend time with prayer he would be in the dwelling place in a secret place and he was spending time with God disciples saw the importance and they saw the power that Jesus was drawing for prayer that so to so they said Jesus teach us how to pray no they were not asking Jesus to teach to teach them a ritual of prayer because they already knew how to pray they were Jewish people they were taught from early age the ceremonies of the temple and how to pray but they were asking Jesus to teach us how you pray because there's a difference in the way you pray and the way we were taught to pray. 
Because even the Pharisees, they said, Jesus, you do things differently that we do. There was results of what, uh, there was, there, there, there are tangible and physical and physical, uh, physical results after you pray or after you declare. And so disciples came and said, Jesus teaches how to pray. pray. Prayer is what you learn. It's not what you're born with. So if you are here in this place and you feel like, you know what, I, I'm not really good at this thing called prayer. You know, I can't pray like you are, you know, or I can't play like this person for hours and hours and this and that. Prayer is something you develop, something you learn, something you grow in as your relationship grows with God. There are many things you can delegate in life. There's many things you can manage in life. But one thing you can't delegate in life is your prayer. You can't have grandma pray for you. You can't have an intercession team pray for you. You can't have just your mom and your dad pray for you. Now their prayers are powerful and they have their place in life. But they can't replace your personal and private time with God. Amen church. So let's read Psalm 91. It says this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. I'm reading from New King James Version shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. And you, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night or, or the arrow that flies by the day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the dark, darkness and of destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousands may fall at your right side and ten thousands of your right hand and it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, nor shall give he, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways in the hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone you shall tread upon lion and cobra the young lion and serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me therefore I will deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with the long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Don't just visit a secret place, dwell in it. Jesus says that when you go to pray to your father's house, uh, to, to, when you go, father's house, when you go pray to your father, go in your house and, and, and go to the secret room and pray. Uh, we just read Psalm 91 he says he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. I believe that this word dwells plays a very significant role. He says not those and, and, and then David begins to list all the benefits and all the blessings that come upon those that dwell in a secret place. I believe that he picked that word and it was inspired by the Holy Spirit specifically that he didn't say those who visit God on occasionally when they're in trouble or those that pray to God when they got tests coming up or when they got pulled over by a police officer or those that they find themselves depressed and anxious and they they're at the end of themselves and uh, even though God receives all things but David says here those who dwell in the secret place meaning those that reside another word in message translation says those whose house is of the Lord means you live in it you you it's your place where you come to lay your head it's a place where you come to rest it's a place where you come to relieve your burdens it's a place where you come to have a communion and fellowship it's a place of your red residency it's a consistent place permanent place a continuing place david says that those that continue in a secret place those that reside in the secret place are hidden under the shadow of almighty god is calling us to a consistent life of prayer 
he's calling us to consistently being with him whatever it means in your life whether it's in the morning whether it's in the, uh, in your on your lunch break whether it's taking a walk uh by the river and listening to some worship music and connecting with him and praying but God wants you all the time and he wants you consistently and he wants to be with you amen church Bible says that blessed is the man who's planted by the rivers of, uh, of, of living water uh, in, 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 uh, in Psalms 1. Notice that again David by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he says planted not occasionally jumps in here and there but they are planted by the living, uh, living water they bear fruit in time they are blessed in all the things that they do because the blessing of God comes into our life when we are consistent with him and the reason church why we're seeing the things that we're seeing right now in our church the testimonies the healings the deliverance the people's lives being dramatically changed people's destinies being 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 changed is because we've been consistent in the vision that God has given us and consistency is what produces the results consistency it was what takes us from one place to another consistency is what separates those that are serious minded and those that are just wishful Jesus says abide in me and I will abide in you and you will bear more fruit and you get some pruning you bear much fruit and you then then he takes he said you continue to abide then your fruit will last but he says you must abide in me we must dwell in a secret place of the most high God amen um, not that we need science to prove that the word of God is true we trust and rely that the word of God is true and it's infallible but even science proves that prayer specifically consistent prayer has a lot of benefits to your brain and to your health dr uh, caroline leaf they did a long uh, many year study and they found out that if only 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over eight weeks period can change your brain to such an extent that it can actually be measured by medical equipment like brain scans and x-rays and things like that and mris just 12 minutes every every day consistently eight weeks throughout this type of prayer increases activity in the brain that are associated with social interaction, compassion and sensitivity to others. Sometimes you have to check yourself. If you begin to run low on love, run low on patience with people, have you been spending time with God? Have you been in a dwelling place? Have you been consistent in your walk with God? There are many studies, I'm not going to go through them. But a National, uh, National Institute of Health, uh, Health funded study, individuals who pray daily were shown to be 40% less likely to have high blood pressure, uh, sugar levels are more regulated um, than those without regular prayer. The Dartmouth uh, Medical School found that the patients with strong religious beliefs who uh, underwent a heart surgery more uh, were three times more likely to recover and recover faster than those that were not those that participate in prayer and meditation daily fewer uh, uh, experience fewer and less severe symptoms those that there were not uh, things like headaches things were like that um, what else I lost my place but even science proves that consistency in our meditation and consistency in our prayer and consistency in our walk with God has so much benefits to our brain to our immune system and to our health overall and so God created us this way he created us for himself and he knew that without him we are not sustainable just like a plant without soil just like the fish without water we were created for the secret place we were created for the presence of God amen church and uh, I'm wrapping up the short message second thing that I want to share is the benefits of the dwelling place this is the reason why I read the whole Psalm 91 is because it lists the things that God begins to do in our life and the things that we begin to experience when we spend time with God on a regular basis first thing that begins to happen in our life 
is that we lose fear, worry and anxiety. You know in our society in our day and age more and more people are found to be anxious and worrisome. In a place where probably we're the most safe in, uh, in, in the entire history of the human race. We're less sick. Our life expectancy is longer. We are better in practically every single way as a society. Health-wise where maybe just a couple hundred years ago people would simply die out of fever. Today it gets treated with simple over-counter medicine. I mean we are as a human race we are so much further and better yet we are the most stressed and anxious and worrisome generation because we are most the most godliest gener uh, godless generation without God you do have a reason to worry because you care for yourself you don't have you can't just trust and rely that somebody will care for you without God you do have to be worried about tomorrow that's why Jesus rebuked his disciples as you not you're not like the world you have heavenly father that cares for you and if he provides even for the grass and the lilies to make sure that they they are beautifully clothed how much more he will provide and care for you that's why Jesus says when you come to me you cast your worries and your burdens aside when we pray when we are consistent in our prayer we can cast our fears and worries aside over 40 million adults in US from age 18 to 45 struggle with depression struggle with anxiety and struggle with uh, with worries even though you know like I said we're living in a country and we're living in the time and season of humanity that the worries should be the least and anxiety should be the least thing that you should be concerned about and so when we pray when we are in a dwelling place when we are in a secret place with God this is a time and a place where we unload our worries we bring our heavy burdens to God when we talk to God and God relieves us of us and reminds us that he is in control that we are his children and he is his father and everything will be all right amen church two is that when we are in the secret when we spend time in a secret place where we dwell in a secret place when we abide when it's a residency we are protected and we are safe verse 10 says no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling there are there is physical and spiritual protection when we are people of prayer when we are people that are committed to God when we are people that walk with God recently as a, as a couple of weeks I read uh, I read an article somewhere online where there were some, some tornadoes in mid, mid Midwest section in, um, in in the United States and there was a story where some children were trapped at church and they were not able to escape to go home and they were advised to stay and put in place because of the tornado uh, the, the tornado that was savage in the area and they began to pray children they began to pray at church and tornado came around and savaged pretty much the whole church and took the roof off of the church but none of the children were harmed come on let's put our hands together for Jesus as well as I read Re, uh, remember a story some years back when there was a severe tsunami somewhere over in Asia in the Asian uh, area and the church uh, the, the tsunami swept the whole area there that went through and pretty much devastated the whole area around the homes people died and there was a lot of a lot of chaos but there were people that the that were not able to move to evacuate areas fast as, as others they were able there's some handicapped there's some people that were sick and ill so they all gathered at church and they stayed there and prayed the interesting thing is everything around was savaged by water destroyed down to foundations except the church and people in the church that were praying were left unharmed and so when we pray come on let's put our hands together for Jesus when we pray we are protected that's why every day before you leave the house, every day 
before before you go out to do your uh, your daily things your daily tasks your work spend time in prayer talk to God because when you pray God puts his hedge of protection over your life he puts his angels around you so that you are protected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that's we're talking about physical protection but so much more in the spiritual realm God puts his angels and his spirit around us to protect us from the attack of the enemies the things that we don't see we work we do our things we're not even mindful but the angels of God are protecting us from the attacks of the enemy in Jesus name number three is deliverance In message translation it says this, if you hold on to me for your dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you best care and if you will only, if you only get to know me and trust me. In, uh, in, 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 in verse in, uh, in verse 14, a New King James Version says this, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. When we are consistent in our prayer uh, life with God, when we spend time in a, in a secret place, uh, when we communicate with our Father, you know, all of us, we have certain issues. All of us, we, care, we carry certain things, certain habits that we are not proud of, certain things that we're trying to get rid of in lives, certain things that we're trying to change, certain things that we inherit generationally from our parents and grandparents, certain curses that are following us. But when we are in a secret place, they lose their grip upon our life when we spend time with God God begins to strip us of of these chains he begins to remove link uh, each link uh, at a time he begins to set us free he begins to peel like uh, peel, peel us like an onion layer by layer to free us so that we can be true to ourselves and we can walk in full freedom and victory that God has for us you want to find freedom you have certain things that you're battling with you have certain addictions certain repeating sin cycles that you can't overcome don't run from God run to God because he is the only one that can break those chains see often what happens is sin and guilt and condemnation and shame it you know when we promised ourselves and to God and to to people around us that we won't do this we won't do this we won't we won't we we we, we we will not uh, commit this sin or we will not do certain habit that we promised that we're gonna stop doing and often we fall back into it and we feel guilt and shame and sinful and instead of running to God we run from God but when we run from God we run into the hands of the enemy but when we run to God he is the one that can deliver us actually and set us free so don't let your sin your habits your your um uh, maybe dysfunctionality whatever it is that that may be drawing you away from God on the opposite let it push you toward God he can wash you with his blood cleanse you remove your guilt and shame and he can actually set you free from it in Jesus name amen let's put our hands together for Jesus in verse 15 says this he shall call upon me and I will answer him number four when you are when you dwell when you live when your house is the presence of God your prayers will be answered your prayer petitions will be answered sometimes we wonder why we pray this prayer but why didn't happen we ask God, God could you please uh, give me this or that or God could you bless me or God I want this and that and then we prayed for day two or once even and then we leave and we and we wonder why did why didn't I, I see that come to fruition why didn't I see it manifest in my life is because we left the place of miracle too early we prayed and God was ready to answer and he was willing to answer but we we quit we were not consistent we were not there when the answer came coming back to the story of Daniel, Daniel began to pray for the freedom of his nation. It was a big request. It's a, it was an almost impossible request because that meant to uh, to defy the, the strongest empire at that moment that con uh, conquered them. But he continued to pray and pray. First day he prayed, second day he prayed, third day nothing was happening in the physical realm that he could see. But on the 21st day angel of God came and said, I was dispatched to you on the first day you prayed. But I encountered some 
counter forces some principalities and powers and some powers that I had to fight against and I had to wait for help and thank God you didn't give up because if you would have given up you would have not seen the answer I want to tell you that in your life there are things that you're battling with there's things that you believe in for there are dreams and the bigger the dream the bigger the vision sometimes the longer it is that you have to fight for it don't leave the place of dwelling don't leave the secret place continue to fight and continue to pray until you receive the answer in Jesus name one of the men of God that he had a training a school of training for healing uh, and I uh, I think it was Smith Wigglesworth and one of the trainings one, in that school the way you graduate is they pick a difficult case for you a person is practically on a death row and they send you to pray for it and uh, uh, pray, pray not for it for 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 the person for them to be made well and your graduation was that the person had to be healed completely otherwise you don't dare to come back to the school that was that was that was how it is it was brutal and so um and they would have to stay with that person and pray until that person receives fr freedom or healing and so sometimes it was immediate sometimes it was days sometimes it was months but people would not leave that person until they were healed partially because they have nowhere else to go unless that person gets healed but nonetheless their persistent faith and their prayer of faith and consistency would deliver the results and so I know there's people in this place that you're battling with certain sicknesses you're battling with certain disease in your body and maybe even some of you were given time by the doctor how long you're gonna live but I want to tell you that according to the Word of God and I believe the Word of God if you make God your dwelling place and if you dwell long enough the sickness will die in his presence your disease will die in his presence in that secret place your addiction and your change will be broken into that secret place your breakthrough will come in that secret place if you don't walk away if you don't give up if you persevere you will overcome in Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ number five Bible says in verse 16 that you will have honor if you feel like in your life you're overlooked if you feel like you're unrecognized you know I don't have many talents maybe I don't have any gifts I don't have anything to shine for I don't have anything to you know to for people to know me if you know him and he knows you that's all you need if you know him he will know you and Bible says that you will be in honor your life will be in honor people will look at you and will say you know I knew this guy before he uh, I, I knew this guy I grew up with him but something is different with him something has changed about him his life is different everything about him is different his marriage is different his he, his household is different his kids are different everything about him is different the way he does business the way he works his work ethics everything is different about him your life will be in honor when you honor God your life will be in the blessing and in respectful place if you continue to dwell in the house of God sometimes I get people from church come and say pastor you know uh, you know I feel this and this because you know uh, I just feel like you know I I'm, I'm overlooked you know I feel like people don't give me don't give me a chance to to prove myself people don't give me a chance to come on the stage and do this I can do as good as that person and as that person and and it's awesome it's good but I always remind those people promotion does not come from men it comes from the Lord that's what Bible says if you want to be noticed if you want to be in honor honor God in your dwelling place spend time let God work with you let God prepare you let God peel certain layers from your character from your heart from your mindset and God will honor you in Jesus name God will honor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I always remind them of the story that uh, I heard from uh, Apostle Vladimir Montana he shared when he was starting his ministry when he got saved and he he was passionate for God God just healed him and he saved him he was radical he would go on the streets sharing the gospel and bringing people to church bringing people to church and there was the only church that he knew that was there was a bit more of a conservative church and he would bring people uh, to church and he practically doubled the church just by bringing uh, new converts to church himself he, he then got on a worship team he was he was uh, playing guitar and singing and he was very passionate and excited and the church was a little bit you know 
no, 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 no. not like hungry Jen. Uh, so, um, and so, and you know, people in, in leadership kind of begin to worry about that he would be kind of strained the people and so that, uh, but it was more of like a power card. They, they were afraid that now that, you know, he's bringing a lot of people to church, he's getting followers, people are listening to what he's saying, that he will not divide it, split the church. So out of fear, out of that, they asked him to not lead worship. Then it wasn't enough. They asked him actually not to be even be on the stage. And, uh, but then still they were, you know, uh, some of the census people start asking, why is he on the stage? He's passionate. He's loving God and all this stuff. Then uh, it wasn't enough that he was just in the church. They asked him not even to come to the church. Okay. But in all this time, he said, I never, I never went against that. You know, wow, I got a gift. I got a talent. Look at how many, half of the church is mine now. You know, I brought them to, he, he remained humble and he understood the principle that promotion and honor comes from God. And and he came to the pastor and said, Pastors, I know, I know that I can't be, I can't come to the church and I won't come to the church out of your respect. But can I come before the church to clean the church and set everything nice? And then I'll come after the church when everybody's gone to clean everything up and put everything in its place. He says, Okay, yeah, you can do that. So he would come for months. He would invite people, people would get saved in the streets, he would send them to the church, but he himself would not be in church because he was not allowed. And he'd come before the church, clean it, prepare for the service and after church he'd come and clean it and prepare the church for months. And then when more and more people started getting to uh, getting saved from another part of the town, it was f farther away. And they saw that, um, that public transportation there was not good and people couldn't make it to church. So they were wondering, what can we do? Pastors were wondering, what can we do to help those people stay connected? And they proposed the idea to open another church in that part of the city. And so okay we'll open the church who do we send they talk amongst each other who maybe you maybe you me. no 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 I don't feel like it's from God and they came to conclusion and they brought Apostle Lottery Montan to the meeting and they said we feel like that you should be sent to start the church in that place think about it they didn't want him to be in the church and they prayed they blessed him and they anointed, anointed him and he went with peace blessing and covering promotion and honor not disgrace not dividing things not making strive among the church not playing church politics and God honored and elevated his life God will honor you if you spend time in a dwelling place and last thing is that you will be satisfied with life you will be satisfied with life you're gonna have a life of purpose when you pray when you spend time with God, you're going to have a, you know, there are people that have everything in the world that you want to have, yet they don't have peace of God. Yet they throw themselves off the buildings. Yet they drink themselves practically to death. They use drugs and other things because they're just empty on inside. There's no purpose and meaning in life outside of God. God is the purpose of life. He is the meaning of life. And He says, if you spend with me that purpose and that meaning will begin to be, you're going to be filled with it in Jesus' name. If you feel like your life is empty, if you feel like life is pointless and it's going in circles, you're not going anywhere. Like Omar shared, uh, shared he's like, my life was random. Nowhere at the same time, everywhere. Begin to spend time with God. You'll see what God will begin to do in your life you will be satisfied in life you might not have this and that you might not have uh some of the things you might still be striving to to uh to be a better person to achieve something in your career in your business in your family to get married or whatever it is and despite of all this striving and, and trying to get there yet you will be satisfied and you will be whole because god fills you and he his glory and his presence is what brings you and drives you in Jesus name I want you to get up on your feet and we will we will go into a time of prayer and worship I want you to talk to God and if you are been in that place of of prayer that consistency with God begin to ask him for a grace to come back to it it's not by our might and not by our strength and not by our promises. Everything with God has to do receiving His grace. Yes, we have to work, we have to apply discipline, but come to Him and ask for His grace. As we worship, we say, God, I'm coming back to the place 
to the secret place to the I'm coming back to your house I'm coming back to the dwelling place in Jesus name